What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of JB360. We have here the Mad Fox M20S. Uh, this is basically, uh, I don't know, I would say it's a, basically an update to the uh, X1. With the main difference being the front suspension. Uh, I believe these are air forks. Uh, definitely does assist with the ride quite a bit, uh, especially when going over bumps and um, various potholes and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically the uh, the X1 with the uh, new four. Uh, it is running the same battery, the uh, 48 volt uh, 10 amp hour battery over here. Uh, of course, it's removable. We also have the single gear system here, uh, working off of the Calsys. It is uh, cadence censored, not torque censored. We have the pretty comfortable seat here, the moto seat, uh, just to kind of make our way over to the dash here. These are running cable brakes uh, on both sides, front and front and rear. And also, uh, we have our little LCD display here. Uh, displays our trip, uh, as well as our battery level, and the uh, full twist model, actually. You know, as I mentioned before, or if you've seen in my review with the X1, I'm not really a fan of the um, CST tires. Uh, they've definitely... Uh, very, very light and thin walled, uh, but they are, you know, decent for for starting out or just, you know, kind of like getting your feet wet with e-bikes. Uh, but yeah, I figured I'd do a little bit of a quick overview of this, uh, do sort of like a little bit of a ride along and review kind of thing. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, there's also the uh, headlight switch here. There. That's for high beam. And if you, if you can't see in the camera, there's actually a daytime running light going around the rim here. The fact that there is a fork actually helps with my uh, 72 volt build that I have planned out for this bike. And uh, I'll really just, you know, I'm going to keep the fork, uh, keep the front tire. We'll probably swap out the tire for some better 20 by 4s um, But yeah, I mean, for the budget, uh, 72 volt build, it'll just be a lot easier uh, to not have to remove these forks. And uh, I can just kind of keep it and just use the rest of the bike. Obviously, uh, replacing the motor, uh, adding the 72 volt battery, probably around here. And uh, I do have a 100 amp Saviton lying around, which I'll probably like add over here, or something like that. We'll see. I may or may not get panels for it. I'm still kind of debating. Let's take a quick ride uh, with the M20S. And uh, let's see how this does uh, over various bumps and potholes. We're actually on our way to work, and uh, yeah, let's see how the uh, Mac Fox handles uh, some of these bumps, bruises and bumps on the road. So the uh, top speed of the uh, M20S is the same as the X1. It uh, goes about 25 miles an hour, tops out about 25 miles an hour. I think the uh, full suspension model actually goes about 28 miles an hour. But yeah, I mean it's pretty decent for uh, entry level entry level e bike. Not too bad. Oh, we got to put these uh, nasty potholes here. Oh yeah, dude, that uh, that front fork really does make a difference. Holy crap! Let's see, it's kind of playing around the side here. Yeah, that's nice. The fork does feel go good. I'm not sure uh, how much travel there is in the fork. Pretty nice ride so far. Pretty comfy. What's weird though is I found out on the site, well actually from the uh, one of the reps at Macbox, is the uh, full suspension model is actually uh, constructed with, a, with an aluminum frame, while the uh, hardtail the hardtail version of the uh, Mac Fox, the, like the X1 and the M20S, they are uh, constructed with a steel frame, which uh, I guess you know compensates for uh, you know, the lack of suspension. But I, I think that's pretty interesting that they went with uh, two different uh, constructions. One thing that I'm noticing though about the uh, the bike is, uh, I think from a dead stop, if you do start pedaling, there's like a real like two three second delay almost and uh you know you probably have to like kind of like pedal pretty hard to just kind of get it like kick started
In my honest opinion too, I think Matchbox should really uh, just do away with the X1 and just keep the M20S. Because, I mean, I'm sure that people that do prefer the, uh, the hardtail won't mind getting front suspension. <laughs> and it's at the same price too. It's literally right under $1,000. So, I mean, the... M20S is the, the more obvious choice than, than going full full blown uh, no suspension. But man, once the bike gets going, it's actually pretty nice, man. I'm at already like 23 miles an hour, and I'm just cruising here. Look, I'll show you guys the delay. It's like, yeah. It didn't happen there because I was at like a rolling start, but uh, yeah, that was like a weird, weird delay. Also guys, if you're thinking about picking up one of these bikes and uh, you're gonna use it for commuting, if you have a long commute, I would highly suggest going with the, uh, the dual battery version or the dual battery option. It uh, doesn't cost that much more to get an extra battery. I think it's like 300 bucks or something like that. But uh, yeah, I mean 10 amp hours, you know, it's not gonna, not gonna get you too far. And if I didn't mention before, the uh, motor is a 500 watt motor, uh, peaking at about 750 watts. So uh, pretty pretty standard standard numbers, you know, for a 48 volt e-bike. I actually am planning on upgrading this uh, bad boy to 72 volts. I have a 20 amp hour uh, battery lying around that was on my X-Class, and uh, I'm gonna use it for this. Uh, I'm gonna also, Use a uh, 100 amp Saviton, uh, which I also have lying around uh, for this little budget build. It's going to be a little bit of a small project, not really a major project, but uh, I do want to make this into kind of like a, a speedy commuter because, uh, <laughs> especially where I live over in Staten Island, uh, you need something to really keep up with traffic. So uh, I'm going to slap on a 3000 watt. MB power hub motor and uh, yeah, see how it goes. I'll be happy if it just gets over 50, but we should, you know, with the uh, with the 100 amp sav, I think we should uh, be able to hit over 50. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, probably not a good idea to do that. Ooh. Look at this. Look, I'm gonna hit this pothole at like 19 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. That suspension travel is real nice. Oh, yeah. The brakes feel real nice, too. Um, they are cable brakes, but they do function, they do work. I mean, this bike is great. I mean, it's it's pretty like bare bones when it comes to the, uh, the look of it, but there's a lot of options for upgrades. You know, if you want to either upgrade motor, upgrade battery, you know, even uh, powder coat the frame, it's pretty easy to take a lot of these uh, parts out, which is really nice. All right, it is nighttime. We got the headlight on, the high beam on, and uh, yeah, we're, we're rolling, man. See, so, yeah, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, if you have a long commute, definitely, definitely opt for the uh, dual battery option. It's uh, definitely more reassuring <laughs> with the 20 amp hours. The 10, 10 amp hours, not so much. I had to actually bring the charger and uh, charge the uh, the battery at work. So over here by the flat iron building, the uh, iconic flat iron building. It's not really like lit up at night, but during the day, it's really uh, noticeable. It's like one of those landmarks you just know once you see it, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen that in the movies, man. All right, we're gonna take the main road, see how that goes. If not, we'll just uh, flip it back onto the uh, bike path. Ooh, it is cold, guys, it is cold. This light is actually fairly bright, not too bad. 
I thought it'd be some like dinky headlight, but I've never really ridden the Mac Fox at night. This is my first time uh, using it in this like night setting. Oh boy. I hate the bike path, dude. I don't even have a, I don't even have a horn on this right now. <laughs> so there's no, uh, no audible warning I can give people. Gotta kind of be careful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So yeah, guys, uh, in terms of upgrades, um, I'm not gonna upgrade the front fork. Uh, you know, after testing it today, I can, I can already tell it's pretty, pretty manageable. Um, you know, we're gonna be upgrading the battery, like I said before, the motor to 3000 watts. Uh, we're also gonna be adding a, uh, a light kit to the bike as well. So we'll be getting uh, some like working, like brake lights, uh, turn signals. Uh, we're also gonna be swapping the, uh, the headlight uh, for sort of like a more like sporty type of headlight, almost like uh, motocross. Uh, we are swapping out the tires for sure, definitely for sure. Um, these, <laughs> these CSTs are not, I, I wouldn't recommend them to keep them on for that long if you do get the bike. We're gonna be actually switching them out to some uh, more heavy duty like dual sport tires. Uh, I actually found these uh, nice ones on Amazon that just came out not too long ago. Uh, people have been purchasing them for their e-bikes and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll be, uh, I'll be adding those to the front and rear tires. Oh yeah, we'll also be upgrading the brakes as well. We're, these are not gonna be staying uh, as cable brakes. Uh, we're gonna be upgrading them to uh, four piston hydros, uh, courtesy of Tektro. Uh, and they do have the brake sensor wires to them. I believe it's called the, uh, the SM plugs. So they uh, plug in directly to the uh, low brake wire of the controller. So basically you can activate regen um, with the brakes, which is nice. Now, I'm a little bit torn. I know I had mentioned I wanted to use a 100 amp Sabaton, but I feel as though it may be too much for that battery that I'm putting in it. Um, I forget the discharge rate of the battery, but uh, it's not it's not super great. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it would suffice with like an 80 amp controller, but I've never really used that battery on a 100 amp. So, uh, I'm really contemplating actually using the uh, spare YYK controllers that I have uh, in my possession. They're rated for 80 amps and they're torquey as fuck. But the only issue is the YYK controllers don't have a dedicated, uh, they don't have a dedicated display. So I will kind of like lose that functionality. Uh, I do have a uh, display from Falcon PEV, but I think it only displays kilometers, which kind of sucks. Because at least with the Sabaton, we do have the, uh, whatchamacallit, the TFT display. And uh, it's pretty much a direct, a direct uh, fit, you know, with the wiring and stuff like that. So it's really, really convenient. Uh, but I'm just afraid I'm gonna be pulling too many amps, you know, with that controller. Um, but at the same time, I feel as though the YYK will do a better job with that battery, especially in terms of range. Oh yeah, bike path at night is so great. Front suspension is so great as well. Come on, man. What the fuck are you doing? Idiot. Dude, why do they always do that? Why? There's no one in front of you. Why would you swerve onto my lane? It feels nice to pedal, though. <laughs> Rather than just using the throttle. I feel as though this is an unpopular opinion, but, you know, you do kind of get bored just kind of like, you know, playing with the throttle. Also, Mac Fox, if you are watching or listening, it would be great if you guys can include the uh, the brake light to the uh, the bike. I think it's a good safety feature to have. You know, I mean, most things I know don't cost that much, and uh, you know, it's just 
great for just visibility overall and uh, for riders behind people, you know. It's just sort of like a peace of mind kind of thing, but you know, it'd be great if y'all could include that instead of like selling it as like a separate thing, you know. Sorry, left side. Thank you. You got it. That guy look like a like a Willy Wonka. <laughs> he was cosplaying as Willy Wonka. But yeah, guys, let's take one one last look at this. This is the last time you're gonna see this thing stock. But overall, if I were to recommend this to somebody, I would I would highly highly recommend this bike, um, especially at the value that it's at. This is under a thousand dollars, about a thousand dollars, and it's great. Like I said, for entry level riders that are looking to get into e-bikes and uh builders that are looking to kind of use this as like a project bike uh it's definitely a good starting point like i said you have the huge cavity over here or for a battery you can even do a bigger battery than the one that i'm doing and you know there's enough room to to mount like controllers even uh other accessories as well but yeah guys uh that's my little quick review of the Mac Fox M20S. And uh, this is available now on their site. Uh, I would highly recommend this over the X1 for sure, mainly because of this, this little uh, air fork right here. Definitely, definitely a game changer. But yeah, guys, if you guys like the content, if you guys like the review today, feel free to like, comment, or even subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.